Tactically this season, Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag seem to be having a transition with the blatant issues in the midfield shown in the opening games of the season with Casemiro pressing high and with the arrivals of Mount, Onana, Hoyland and importantly Amrabat at the end of the transfer window will make this Manchester United side hopefully look a lot different this season. In today's video, we're going to build a style of play with United similar to how they might look once the squad are all fit and the options Eric Ten Hag will have available to tweak his side in particular against different opposition and how he might improve that away form against the big six. All the tactic files are available on my Patreon, links down in the description, but we will go through each team and play a role so you guys at home can copy the tactic yourselves. Now, this is what it looks in game. Now, the glaring thing that you can see is this here. This sort of like lopsided double pivot. Now, the only reason we've done that is because I'm wanting Delot to, uh, to invert, and he's done that quite well over the last season, in particular as well against Arsenal in the defeat before the international break. The only way I can get him to invert is if we have these two set up like this. Okay, if they were set up in the standard sort of like 4 2 3 1, he wouldn't invert. So I've done it like this. Also, we know with Casemiro, he goes wandering. I've got him as a Volante because he will generally go wandering. Also, I'm thinking this potentially will be a role that I'll change to something else with the involvement of Ericsson and Mount at certain points in the season. All right, so that's why we've done that, because we want to form that sort of like box midfield where we will get maybe a Mount, Ericsson, even at times a Casemiro going up there, and then a Delot and Amrabat holding and making a nice little box midfield, or even at times a diamond. Okay, so in goal, we've got Onana, sweeper keeper, on attack, no player instructions. Delot, we've got inverted wing back. So remember, we want him coming into this midfield, helping with build up. And it also drags players in, allowing Anthony on that right hand side to get a little bit of a 1v1. Right, so here we are. Delot actually gets on the score sheet uh, to open the score against Sheffield United. So here he is in possession. He's going to probably get on it now. He gets nice and narrow, which helps. And now that he's on the ball, he's picked it up nice and narrow. What it does give us is a 1v1 opportunity out there. Now, Sheffield United are playing with a 5 3 2. So they are playing with sort of like a fullback and a winger. But him being out there would probably then drag another midfielder out. It might even drag a centre forward out. But him being narrow, it gives us that probably an overload in midfield to progress the ball. But it also gives us the opportunity to have Anthony up there 1v1. Anthony's now got three. Let's just follow the run of Delort. Can you see now? He's in a nice little position. One thing that we spoke about, if you check out my video, uh, the problem with Manchester United midfield is rest defence. So he gets into a nice area with rest defence in terms of if there's a counter-attack, he's in a nice central area. He's just going to go out a shot for a little bit, but he comes back in. There he is, waiting at the edge of the area. Nice inverted role. And that's what we may see from Manchester United and we may see from Delot a little bit. I think he needs to improve on his end product, but I think he will probably get a couple of goals this season from in and around this area. OK, now the two centre-backs. I've got Varane as a central defender, just on defend, no play instructions. The reason why I've done that is because he's, he's OK at passing. He's OK. He's not one for a long ball. He's actually all right at carrying. His progressive carries are pretty good. He likes to carry the ball probably more than what he does than a long pass. But I've just got him to be basic because we're going to get Amrabat helping with build-up. We don't necessarily need it. But what we do have is the partnership of Amrabat, Varane and Martinez. So we've got Amrabat as a halfback, which we'll probably talk a little bit more about in a minute. The Martinez role is absolutely key. Ball playing defender on dribble more. Now, if you're playing with a back three... You two wide centre halves, I would all encourage, always encourage to have dribble more on. And the reason why we're doing it is because of this. Right, as you can see, we generally build up with a back three. Now, the player instruction for Martinez is dribble more. And that's important because we want him to progress to play and try and sort of like go out a press and try and trigger the opposition's press. And we managed to do that. So Amrabat stood in the middle, as you can see. Varane won't do much. He'll kind of just stay there because his memory's on that central defender on defend. But we want Martinez to carry. He's quite a good carrier. He's got space in front now as well, look, so he's out. And then what he is at some point, he's going to bait the press of Paqueta. And then that gives us a little 2v1 so we can play around and we can get Luke Shaw going. So there he goes. And he finally faces him up. He's carried the ball, what, 20 yards up the pitch. It's not much, but it's just enough to distract Paqueta. And then we've got the opportunity for Shaw to push forward. And we play. And it's a lovely ball from Fernandez. Something that you would probably see from Fernandes and Hoyland, I think we'll get that a lot. A ball played into Fernandes' feet, a couple of quick passes to break through the lines, and then can we feed Hoyland nice and early? 
And then once again, the difference between the two. So Onana's going to throw it out to Varane. And he's, still a little, he's got all that space to carry him. But because we've just got him as a central defender on defend, he plays a nice little early pass into Anthony. And here once again, he gets it. He gives it really simple. Now Amrabat in. There's your double pivot with Casemiro. And then once again, Martinez, his first option because we've got Dribble Moore on, is to carry. Once again, doesn't carry it far, but it just, just sucks in Paqueta so that it gives us an option of Luke Shaw to get a pass into Rashford. Okay, so that's the reason why we've got those two in there and it gives us a nice balance. Luke Shaw on that left-hand side, I've just put him as a full-back on support. We've got to be careful that we're not too overly aggressive. Now, at times, I have changed this to a wing-back on support. When we were struggling to break Everton down, I thought we just needed a little bit around this left-hand side. We'll also maybe sometimes change the role of Shaw, depending on what we do with this role here that I'll talk about in a little bit. So Luke Shaw, full-back on support. That's just to help us progress the ball. We've got Rashford. Once again, we want Rashford isolated. We want him 1v1. So I necessarily don't need Luke Shaw bombing down the line at all times. He's not overly aggressive in his, in his runs. The full-back on support gives us a nice little balance between the two. But at times, wing-back on support is key. In particular, when we change it up a little bit, sometimes I've gone in here and I've played like an Ericsson. And when I play an Ericsson in here, I have a roaming playmaker, even as a register, he drops into these areas. So what I have done is if he drops into these areas in that row, I've then put Shaw as a wing back on support so then he can get round and support that way a little bit higher up the pitch. That will give a little bit more space for maybe an Ericsson amount to drop into as a register, as that deep line playmaker potentially to get on the ball. Right, the hub of the team, the one that is making us tick, it's Amrabat. Obviously something that Manchester United have needed. In particular, if you look at his stats from FB ref, the amount of progressive um, the amount of progressive passes, his carries are quite good. And even though his stats don't show it, he's tremendous off the ball in terms of recovery runs, breaking up play. You remember in the World Cup, it was absolutely superb. I think his stats are a little bit misleading because at Fiorentina, they were highly possession oriented. So most of his stuff in game was done on the ball. His statistics don't really add up. If you compare him with Declan Rice, he played in a West Ham side without the ball, so he had to do a lot more tackles, a lot more break interceptions. He didn't have to do that because his team generally had the ball. But absolutely brilliant. Half back, but with the instructions, tackle more harder because we want that nasty, we want that little dark dark arts kind of thing that he does have Amrabat and take more risks because he's superb at progressive passes. We don't just want him to drop in here and just play it out wide to the left back, the full back. We want him to get on the play, and we want him to maybe potentially feed balls into maybe a Casemiro who's got higher, a roaming playmaker, depending on what shape we've gone. Can he find Fernandes? Can he find a switch out to the right and left? So that's why we've got take more risks. The role as well as a halfback just gives us that little bit of rest defence that Manchester United didn't have before the international break. We did that high press with Fernandes, Mount and Casemiro going in there, and in the games against Spurs, and in particular Wolves at the start of the season, Casemiro was getting caught in these areas. Now, if he does do that, not so much of a problem because we've got Amrabat in there who's going to be supporting from a little bit deeper. Now, what we've got here is a good clip of that, of him breaking up the play. So a little bit of a sort of like a little bit of 50-50 going on in the middle of the park. Him and Anthony break it up and then he looks to play. Now, he, as you can see, he drops in to make the back three. That helps us split the back two, the two centre half split. Anthony is kind of, ends up looking, once again, looking like a little bit of a diamond with the two fullbacks. You could even say Shaw and Anthony were the fullbacks. You've got Amrabat sitting deep. You've got your two central midfielders with your two strikers and your 10. And it sets up really nice. And it just gives Manchester United, obviously, we're playing against Sheffield United because some, and they're quite narrow because they're playing that 3 5 2. But it gives us options and makes sure we don't get overloaded in the midfield. And then he's just there as an option all the time, just getting it, ticking it over, moving the ball. Anthony coming off the side, which you'd expect. The only thing that I would change, and I have actually changed after three games, because our nil-nil draw against Everton, we were struggling just to that final pass. And we tweaked a couple of things in the team instructions, including working to box. I would potentially have shoot less often on at the half-back, because what they do is they get into these areas a little bit, and for me there, yes, 
there's that space, but he could have carried it. He could have maybe even found another pass. We're also, as well, just with the halfback while we're on, we're just in a better position with rest defence. Because Casemiro, we know, can go wandering. At times, as well, with his role, we've moved get further forward on as well. So he'll often get into the box. Just having Amrabat in this hole, halfbacks still get a little bit too far forward for me in FM. I think it's the closest thing we can get to what Amrabat does, though. I think, really, we'd want him maybe another five or six yard backs. But he's gone on the edge of the area. If you look at a couple of his highlights, Fiorentina last year, he did have a couple of efforts from outside the area. Now, this left-hand side is the most interesting one of the lot. This is where I think we can really go for it. So, we've gone Casemiro, uh, Volante, just because he likes to get into the box. He likes to make late runs. He goes wandering, which we know that he does. He likes to go around pretty much a little bit times at like a box-to-box -box midfielder. So, I thought a Volante would do him the most. I think you could, we're probably going to see it more as well, because Amrabat's going to be in there, and we know he's going to sit and be quite disciplined in there. I think Casemiro gives us the option for him to start deep, Help him build up, which he's good at, but then at the same time, then moving in and following the ball and maybe getting round in, in and around the edge of the area. So there's that option there. I think in the big games, we may look at more of a standard 4-2-3-1. We may see him just playing as a DM. There's also the look at the player instruction, get further forward, just because at times he just, even with the Volante role, he was still just hanging around in here. So I put get further forward and just see if we could get him to break into the box. And that worked quite well. Other options as well. It could be the introduction of Ericsson, which I've done at times with a roaming playmaker in there, even a register who will drop deep and get on the ball and potentially carry. You could then move Luke Shaw to a little bit higher, wing back on support. Now, the issue what we have had with them both playing in that defensive structure as a roaming playmaker is they get a little bit too close together. So as you can see, they're quite close together now. We'll, we can kind of accept that. They're very close together now as they look to push up a little bit. We lose the ball, but we do get it back. And it's just this bit here where they're kind of dropping into the same areas which we don't want. We want Amrabat to be that first one, and we just want Ericsson to either be a little bit wider to move Shaw on, which you can do with the register, with the player instructions, stay wider. That works if you push Shaw on a little bit. But we just thought, if we just move Ericsson into that number eight role as a roaming playmaker, let's see what happens. And as you can see now, the role is completely different. We're building up from the back again. Amrabat is there, and Ericsson is a good, he's an option. At the moment, he's getting marked, but he's a lot further away, trying to get in between the lines of Spurs' attacking players and their midfield players. There you can see he's on the ball now, and he's going to get... Is he going to get on it? He does get on it, and he plays, and we're off. And then once again, he moves away from Amrabat. They're not doing... They're not going hunting for the same pass as what we were seeing when they were playing as two DMs. Okay, so that's something to consider. I said one of the other options you can do is I do like to do a register on support. And also have the instruction of stay wider and then potentially move Luke Shaw on a little bit more aggressive. But it just gives you some nice little in-game options. In-game options that Eric Ten Hag. And in-game and obviously from game to game depending on the opponent. Okay, moving into the front four. Now we've gone Anthony as a winger. Now you might not notice and think that he is a winger. But we're doing that because we want him to stay as wide as possible. Because the lot is coming in here. We're not getting those overlapping runs. We need him to keep the width. And we only way we can do that is if he's a winger. If he's an inverted winger, he'll start in these pockets here, and it's kind of then closing up the space for Fernandez. We want him isolating that fullback. He will cut in anyway because he's left-footed, and he cuts in from the right wing. So the player traits, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to stay wide and have that old-fashioned sort of like Ryan Giggs on the left where he just used to skin him down the left-hand side. We're talking Anthony. He will stay wide. That's what he does, but then cuts in. Okay, so here's a counter-attack that we eventually score from. Amrabat driving the ball forward, linking up with Hoyland, who's going to drop in. T and Fernandez. Anthony got staying really wide. But then, obviously, because he's left-footed, he's going to cut in. Now, FM's not great sometimes at recreating stuff, but I think if this play was a little bit deeper, if Anthony was maybe another, what, in this area here, 20 yards, 15 maybe yards further forward, Rashford's going to be in the box. I think we can see this goal a lot more often, where Anthony is on his right foot, but then cutting in onto his left, and either finding a Hoyland or a late run from Rashford. And Anthony does get on the score sheet, widest player, but once again, because he's left-footed, because he's got that player straight, he's going to naturally want to come in, and here he is, he attacks, 
and then he cuts for goal because he wants to come in off that right foot. A very Anthony-like finish, trying to bend it into that bottom corner. So there you go. That's the role of Anthony. Definitely something to look at, regardless if, you, if you're wanting to keep your width on that right-hand side and you want someone moving in as a winger, you can still have a left-footed winger on that side. Absolutely no problem. Bruno Fernandes, he could be anything. You know, at times he's been a shadow striker. He's been an attacking midfielder. I think there will be at times Mason Mount will come into the side either to give him a rest or to maybe play Fernandes out on that right-hand side as a playmaker. I have got another tactic for my patrons for the big games, which we'll speak about right at the very end. So there will be that in the download folder for you. Fernandez, though, attacking midfielder on support, just so he can get, he will roam. I haven't put roam on. I haven't found the need to do it, but there is times maybe in games when you want just to try and create a little bit, maybe a team against a low block. He might just get a little bit stifled in there. If they're playing with maybe a back four or a back five with a sitter with a sitter or even two sitters. So you need him to roam into positions. I think, to be fair, a roam is what you will naturally do most of the time anyway. So uh, Fernandez, AM on support. Rashford on this left-hand side. In, uh, in, inside forward, on attack. Stay wider just because we want him to create that 1v1. He does stay wide. We want that width. He'll stay wide and try and create, and then he will drive in onto that right foot. So that's why we've done inside forward on attack and then stay wide, just so it opens out the play a little bit. As I said, you're going to have potentially having runs from maybe an underlapping run from Shaw. Martinez driving forward and just having that wider out ball just gives us a better option. And then up front, Hoyland, it has to be a pressing forward. I think he's going to link the play a lot better than what a Martial does. Not very good back to goal, Martial. We've got these brilliant clips as well from Hoyland, just linking the play. Now, he has been unfortunate. He's had a stinker to start with. 6.8 and only one goal. He's just scored in the fourth league game that we've just had. I did a simulation, a little practice up until December, and he'd scored in the 18 Premier League games, he'd scored 18 goals. And he has been getting a few little sniffs. So I think he would turn into an absolute monster in this Manchester United team. And we actually saw that against Arsenal, of potentially what he's going to be able to do for the team. But that pressing forward, what it does give us, I think at times what it'll give us here, as you can see, it'll just be a little bit deeper. And then finding the run. So Marcus has started really wide, but then he's coming narrow. And I think we'll get a few of these combinations. Rashford was just offside, actually, for this goal. But a nice little slip pass. And then it'll just... And once again, he's just going to provide a link and have runners in behind. Because he's got his, going to have his back to goal a lot. He's good linking play. There he is. Gets a little bit of luck, but then he's looking at feeding them balls through. We get that with the pressing forward. We also know with those long balls that we showed that clip with Fernandez playing it over the top. Right, into the team instructions. Okay, so positive mentality. We've got attacking width just so we can maximise because we've got that box midfield and that diamond midfield at times. It's important that Anthony and Rashford and even Luke Shaw keep their width and make the pitch in possession as big as possible. Try and recreate, stretch the back line as well against teams with a low block. Shorter passing. I have mixed between the two, slightly higher when we've played the bigger teams and then higher tempo against sort of like teams wanting to dominate the ball just to help us circulate the pass. At the start of the season, we didn't have worked the ball into the box on, but we just seem to be having too many shots from outside the area. Remember that Amrabat shot, there was also a game against Everton where we'd only struggled to break them down and we maybe just rushed it with four or five shots from sort of like 20, 30, 35 yards. So I've got work into the box and that seems to have worked a little bit better. In transition, we've got counter press and then counter attacking because we want to transition and counter attack as quickly as possible. Okay, short kicks for Anana. He will go, you know, I've done short kicks because if you don't click it, he will just go along every time because we've got sweeper keeper on attack. Sometimes he goes out to the wide men, sometimes he goes full backs, centre backs, playmakers. I've just got that on so he can just play a pass into wherever he likes and hopefully pick the best option. Out of possession, we've just got a simple high line. High press. I haven't done the trigger press more. I don't think Manchester United are going to be absolutely a pressing machine. I think he would like them to be, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, that is it, guys. That is a kind of a tactical rebuild for Manchester United. Uh, it does actually work really well in the game with the inverted wing back, the role of Amrabat as well. You need that half back low to be a creative player. It needs to be a creative player. Let me know down in the comments which team you would like me to do a tactical rebuild on. Patreons, all they are. I think there'll be three, actually, three files for you to download. A big game one, a sort of like a register one, and then this general tactic for you. I've gone through everything for you in terms of the, the play instructions that you need if you want to copy it in, but check out the Patreon. Muchly appreciated. Thank you as well to all the 62 people, I think it is now, that are supporting me 
on there. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.